Welcome back, everybody. It is a cold January morning. Uh, choosing your paddle length used to be an easy thing. It used to be very easy. It's not so easy anymore. It's gotten fairly complex. Let's talk about the options. Let's go. Okay, so as I said, used to be easy, is now complex. Let's talk about the way we used to do this, which is still fine. It's, I like to think of it as quick and dirty. Let's talk about that. Uh, I'm gonna just grab this Lendl paddle uh, and talk about the quick and dirty, and you would line up the one end of the paddle in front of your foot, and then with the other hand, just you should be able to wrap your fingers around the top of the paddle. And that would mean that paddle was the right size for you. The problem with that, it never actually worked for me. Okay, so that was the quick and dirty method. And that's actually what we used at REI where we had to get a lot of people into boats relatively quickly. We had a good size range of paddles, but we, we didn't have like, I couldn't really fine tune. I just had to get people into boats and that works pretty well. I will caveat and say that I think that that easy probably works for a recreational kayak, but I think that if you're trying to push your limits, your abilities, your skills, I think you need to be a little bit more precise. And really what we used to talk about was taking into account the paddler's height, the width of the boat, and sometimes the paddling style. If you go to Aquabound's website or Bending Branch's website, there is a fit guide that uses that formula as well as paddling style and adds some caveats, some additionals. Hey, add five for this, subtract five for this. Uh, and when we talk about paddles, we're talking about uh, measuring paddles in centimeters uh, with the standards being 210, 220, 230, 240 with some oddballs, some longer, some shorter. Werner paddles used to do this and they don't anymore. Werner's fit guide now only will help you find the right paddle shape, not the length of your paddle. And the same at Lendl is that there is there's a thing to help you choose your paddle, but not paddle length. And that's because it's gotten very complex. 20 plus years ago when I started paddling, I went to a paddling trade show and found the Werner Paddles a uh, booth and a rep and said, hey, here's the kind of paddling I do, fit me for a paddle. He put me in a Werner Kamano straight shaft uh, and it was 220 in length. And so that was the paddle he put me in and I've been paddling at 220 ever since. Over time, if I hit the Werner fit guide when it did paddle length, it would say that I should be in a 215. But I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to change paddles. I like the 220. This works for me. I've also always said that paddle lengths are a lot like the lengths of women's skirts, which I think used to go up and down with the times. In the 50s, they were long. In the 60s, they were short. In the 70s, they were long. In the 80s, they were short. I think they're all just short now, but that used to be an expression. And so I always tended to think of paddle lengths like that, um, that find what you like, but over time, the standard is going to change based on what's going on. Here's why this has gotten more complex. So as I mentioned, paddling style is part of the equation. So I am a low angle paddler. There are also high angle paddlers. That's not to say that I don't occasionally slide into a high angle style, but I spend most of my time long distance touring. Low angle style is low effort, long distances, long days, right? High angle is a bit more aggressive. It really comes from white water. It's I want to move the boat really fast from here to there, or I need to go really fast through this rough water. And when I talk about high angle, I'm talking about the angle between the paddle shaft and the horizon. So a low angle is like here and a high angle, the shaft would be like that. So that's part of the equation is we have to account for low angle and high angle styles. But there are other problems. Seat height is now becoming an issue, but we're seeing big differences in seat height from boat to boat. And not even just in touring boats, but if you look at things like the native watercraft fishing boats, those have a really high seat height. Um, and it's to give fishermen a better view of the water, which I totally understand. But that's going to screw up the your height, width of boat, paddle style 
equation, right? So seat height, paddling style, width of boat, and we're seeing greater variations in widths of boats. And then even types of paddles. We're seeing more people paddling with wing paddles. We're seeing more people paddling with Greenland paddles. And then the Euroblades, like what I use, are still very popular. It's still the most popular, but you may change the length of paddle based on those things. And that is one of the things I like about the Lendl paddle that I'm using right now, which is that there is some adjustability in there. I think about five centimeters on each paddle. I can adjust the length of that paddle. I tend to not do that, but it's nice to have that option if I want it or if you wanted it. So here is how I think we should be sizing paddles. The first thing is, which is really difficult, is we should be trying out lots of different paddle lengths to get a feel. Uh, when I got on the water in Cape Lookout a few months ago, I went to, with a group to teach navigation and someone handed me their Lendl Storm so I could try it out. Uh, and she was about my height, maybe even a little taller, but was using a much shorter paddle than mine, like a 205, I think she said it was. Uh, maybe a 210, so much shorter than I was using. I couldn't, I wasn't really comfortable with it. Um, so there's tons of variation, and part of that that variation is personal preference as well. Here's what I look for when I'm testing out a paddle. So what I look for when I see a student paddling, when I think about is their paddle the right length? Actually, I would do it like this. Is their paddle the right length? I would say I'm looking at where their blade is in the water. And so I've I've talked about this before a little bit. The paddle, and these are perfect conditions to do it if I can do it without edging. The paddle throat should be right at the water line. Um, if I edge, it makes it harder. Well, that's not bad, actually. Uh, even edging, I'm fairly consistent, which is good. We want that water line to be right at the throat of the paddle. Based on my primary paddling style in terms of angle, the blade of the paddle should be fully submerged in the water, but almost no shaft should be in the water. I want the water line to be right at the throat of the paddle, which is where the blade meets the shaft of the paddle. That's what I'm looking for. If I'm putting in way too much shaft in the water, then I've got too much paddle. This is too much blade in the water. I'm, I'm wasting energy by putting, of course I just got water down into my pogey. You're wasting energy submerging the paddle too deeply. If I've got not enough blade in the water, then I'm giving away power. Likewise, if I'm going like this, I'm not getting enough paddle in the water. I'm giving away power. So that's what I'm looking for is it's that combination of where is the paddle landing in the water versus the angle, the paddling style of the person paddling. And as I said, this might vary boat to boat for you, just for you. It might pat vary boat to boat, but it should be fairly consistent if you're in the same boat all the time. 220 works beautifully for me and I'm not gonna change it. I've been paddling with that for way too long. Uh, I'm not gonna change that up. But in order for you to find that, you're gonna have to try different lengths. So when you're paddling in a group, when you're paddling with friends, try out their paddles in terms of size. Um, I think height width of boat is a good starting point, but it's not a good ending point. And that ending point is where is the blade ending up in the water as we're paddling? Okay, that's finding the right paddle length for you. And it really, it comes down down to, to trying out a bunch of paddles and looking at it. And even then it can be hard to tell. You might need someone to watch while you're paddling to see how much blade is in or out of the water uh, or a camera, which I'm a big fan of. And I think next week I'm gonna be talking about how I shoot video. So that might be able to help you out as well. Okay, thanks for stopping by. My books are available on Amazon or on coffee in digital form, stickers and gear lists and Guides way and stuff like that is on coffee too. Uh, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe. I'll see you outside.